The Story of George Washington Carver, written by Eva Moore. Chapter 14, page 71. Caption under the picture. The students at Tuskegee helped to build the school's church. This photograph was taken about 1910. Chapter 14. The second year, Dr. Carver's class planted sweet potatoes on the school farm. He thought that every farmer should have a sweet potato patch. Sweet potatoes were easy to grow and they were good for the soil. They did not use up much nitrogen. Dr. Carver showed his students the right way to plow and how to plant sweet potatoes. Another year, when the soil was good enough, Dr. Carver's students planted cotton on the farm. It was the best cotton crop they had ever seen. Dr. Carver wanted all the farmers in Macon County to know about the good crops they were growing in Tuskegee. He wrote booklets about each crop. In a few years, farmers all over the country were learning how to grow bigger and better crops because of the work George Washington Carver and his students were doing and because of the booklets he wrote for them. But what of all the farmers could but what if all the farmers could not read? Dr. Carver thought of a way to help them too. On weekends, he loaded a cart with sweet potatoes, cow peas, and other crops his students had raised on the school farm. He drove off to visit poor farmers in Macon County. When he showed them the samples, he told them how they could grow foods like, like this and, at the same time, make their soil better for growing cotton. Dr. Carver always felt sad when he saw something going to waste. He told the farmers he visited to use everything nature gave them. There were vegetables and fruits growing wild in their backyards. These plants were good to eat. He showed the women how to make wild crab apples into jelly and ketchup. Wild pumpkin could be dried and used as food all winter. Many farmers thought that plants growing wild could not be worth much. Everything that helps to fill the dinner pail is valuable, Dr. Carver told them. Sometimes Dr. Carver had some vegetable seeds to give the farmers. Plant a garden, a little place by the house, he said. But if you cannot afford to put a fence around it, don't have it where the chickens can get in and dig it up. Dr. Carver showed the farmers how to make a kind of yellow paint out of Alabama clay. They could use it to paint their shabby houses and make them more cheerful. He showed the women how to make rugs by weaving dried okra stalks together and how to crochet pretty mats for the table out of string. Some of the farmers did not trust Dr. Carver at first. They thought he came to see them just to show off. But once they knew him, they could see. He cared about them and wanted to help. The farmers welcomed Dr. Carver to, to their homes. Top of page 74. In 1906, Tuskegee was given money to build a new kind of school, a school on wheels. This school would go out to farmers and teach them as Dr. Carver had been doing. Dr. Carver drew a picture of how he thought the new school on wheels should be made. He drew a big wagon with shelves to hold tools, boxes of seeds, and bags of fertilizer. Soon the school on wheels 
was ready to roll. Now more farmers could learn how to make better farms and have happier lives. Caption under the picture. Dr. Carver's drawing was used as the model for Tuskegee's school on wheels. The wagon was named after Morris Jessup, the man who gave money to have it built.